The application server demo includes samples to show how to save data in multiple tables. A common way this is done is with repeating rows. Here we see a UX component designed to show how to enter an invoice. The top section has information about the invoice header and shipping and billing information. We have a date picker to fill in the date and as you can see the layout is designed in such a way to provide a pleasing format. At the bottom section we have inventory items which are in a repeating row section. We can add a row by clicking on the icon we can remove a row. Notice when we add a row we have started a scrolling section for the repeating data. You can also use buttons to navigate within the repeating section. At the bottom we have some fields which are calculated fields as we are entering invo invoice items in this case through a drop down with an edit combo list. And as you can see as we add a quantity of one we fill in the subtotal, the tax rate and tax and a grand total. We have some notes about this particular UX component that you can see here which explains how the UX component is constructed and behaves. We also have help available. The help will show various videos that were created to show how to create repeating sections, how to create a scrollable container and adding row numbers. Another way to show multiple records is through a list control. This particular list control uses slider controls, a drop-down control, and a list control. The list control on the right uses a freeform layout to show a list of hotels. The list slider controls in the drop-down are used to create a filter and display order for the list control. As you can see, there's a series of videos that show how to construct all of these various items. As we can see here, as we change the slider for the price per night, we will change the records that are displayed. If we want to show more records, we click on the Show More. It will bring up more records that fit the filter. We can also change the sort order. As you can see here, so we can sort based low to high or high to low. Another way a list control can be used as a replacement for a grid control. This particular list control has been styled as a grid has a search section at the top and a footer section at the bottom with navigation. Also has a help button here. Shows a little bit. As you can see we've used the list control has been styled to behave like a grid and look like a grid. We use column headers, use a grid header style. The search section and the footer are both created by adding containers above and below the list with the same width as the list. The search container has a text box and a couple buttons to run Action JavaScript to search the list view or to remove the search. The footer section also has navigation and we have an on-click double-click event on the row which opens another UX component. So we double-click on a row we open up a, what appears to be a detail view which is another UX component. The advantage of using the list view control is speed. It is much faster than a grid for the same number of records. However, we can also use a UX as a detail view for a grid itself. This is styled similarly to the previous list control. It has a search section at the top. But this is a grid component. If we double click on a row to open the detail, we now open up a UX component to edit the existing row. There's also an option here to create a new record, which opens up the UX control in new record mode. Another way we can use uh, various components is a special component called an image gallery component. This opens up an image gallery which is typically used on mobile devices but can be also used on the desktop. And as you can see we can scroll through the various images using the image gallery component. 